If you are an international medical graduate doctor interested in moving to Canada and practicing medicine by doing residency, the whole process of CARMS matching can seem very confusing. In this video, I will explain the CARMS matching process in a very simplified way. I will talk about the basic eligibility requirements, the examination requirements, the English test requirements, the fact that whether you can get away with USMLE or not, two cycles of CARMS matching that happens every year, the medical identification number of Canada, or MINC, then I'll talk about some specific provincial requirements, especially if you're interested in British Columbia, Alberta, and Quebec. And finally, something called CASPER, and let's do this together. There are three basic eligibility requirements. Number one is you must be a Canadian permanent resident or Canadian citizen. Canada has put this mandated rule. Whereas in the US, if you're applying for residency, you don't need to have any visas or any green card. Just to compare. The second requirement is that your medical college or your medical school must be recognized by World Health Organization. You can easily check this by going to this website called World Directory of Medical Schools. Now, just to give an example, I'll go to this website called World Directory of Medical School, which is WDOMS.org, and then I'll click on search the World Directory. This opens a page of World Directory of Medical Schools. Here, I'll pick the country as India, and then the city, I'm going to say Bangalore. You will see the list of all medical schools or medical colleges in the city of Bangalore. I'm just using this as an example. Sure, you can search any country, any city using the same process. I'm going to click the specific medical school. In this case, I'll say Bangalore Medical College and Research Institute. Then this is going to give you four different tabs. School details, contact information, program details, and sponsor notes. You need to go to sponsor notes and then see if there is Canada written there. And this means your medical college has given you eligibility to register for Medical Council of Canada and then subsequently apply for comps matching. Now, if you're interested in the US, you would see a similar note from ECFMG USA. The third basic eligibility requirement is your graduation date. You must be graduated by July 1st, the year you're going to start a residency. I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to start your residency in the year of 2025. This means you must be graduated before July 1st of 2025. For a Canadian medical graduate, this is what happens. If this person is interested in starting residency in 2025, they start their process of applying in September of 2024 when the application opens. This is a process of few months and then before they are expected to start the residency in July, they would hear that they have matched, so this way, they finish their final year of medical school and then they immediately start their residency. So ideally, there is no gap between medical school and residency. But for you as an IMG, the same graduation requirements apply. But in my personal opinion, you're also better off finishing your internship as soon as possible. I mean, to me, this feels like this is a safer approach because many countries give the graduation certificate only after completing internship. This is different in Canada. Just something you IMGs should keep in mind. The examination requirements is what most IMGs hate. The examination process has gone through many different changes over the years in Canada. So when I started my process in Canada, there used to be an exam called MCCEE, -E, which stood for Evaluating Examinations. This MCCEE -E exam thankfully does not exist anymore. Canada has also not taken MCCQE2 at this point of time. To summarize, the only examination you need is MCCQE1. Well, I said only, but there is another ASCII-based examination that you need, and this is called NAC, a National Assessment Collaboration. Is this making sense? Thankfully, they have made it simple. All provinces take MCCQE1 and NAC examination. There is a catch. The big question IMGs have, I have done USMLE, can I use USMLE to apply for Canada? The only province 
at the time of me recording this that lets you use USMLE or NBME in place of MCCQ1 is Nova Scotia. This can change any time, but at least at this time, Nova Scotia does take USMLE. Now, there are some exceptions for NAC as well. If you have by any chance completed the MCCQE2, which does not exist anymore, then you can use that in the provinces of Quebec and Ontario. So confusing, isn't it? That's the whole reason of making this video. So this makes it easy for you. Now, many IMGs really struggle going through this process. In spite of things published online, and there are videos talking about this. Well, I don't blame you because these processes are quite confusing. Hence, we do provide coaching and guidance for you IMGs, which you can book by going to www.imgsecrets.com. We even have sat with IMGs when they apply for residency matching, so they don't make any mistakes and their application shines pristine. So they significantly increase the chances of them getting matched. Is this making sense? How you can make use of this? Now on to the English examination requirements. At the time of me recording this, there are three different types of English exams that you can use for comps matching. Number one is called CALPIP, which stands for Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. The second one is IELTS, International English Language Testing System. And this is what I took when I moved to Canada. And the third one is OET, Occupational English Test. Now listen to this carefully as this can be really confusing. If you take the CELPIP, you must take the general version of it and you must get a score of more than nine in the same setting with all the modules. If you take IELTS, you could take it on a paper, on a computer in your home country. Doesn't matter. And this is important. In IELTS, you must get a score of more than seven in the same setting. What this means is, you can have seven on some day in writing and seven on another day in reading. The score of seven must all be in the same examination setting. Is this making sense? With the OET, the Occupational English Test. If you take your OET on a computer, then this exam is good to be used to apply for comps matching. But on the other hand, if you do a paper version of the test, and if you do the test in your home country, then many provinces may not accept this. Ugh, so confusing. So the safest bet for you, in my opinion, is to just take the CELPIP, or I would encourage taking the IELTS personally, because I have taken it. It's a very easy exam, and you can pretty much get a score of more than seven with a bit of training. In Canada, the comps matching happens in two phases. They call this the first iteration and the second iteration. The first iteration is for those IMGs who are trained from outside the USA or Canada, essentially in your home country. If you trained in the USA, this is considered an accredited training. Okay, so for you as an IMG, your training would be considered as non-accredited training. And you would apply to begin with in the first iteration cycle. Now, there are some spots that gets left unfilled during the first iteration cycle of comps matching. Now, you must be wondering, then why don't they take more IMGs? Well, there are many reasons for that. Anyways, for those IMGs who don't match in the first iteration cycle, who did not apply for matching in the first iteration cycle, you have the option of applying to the second iteration cycle and hope for the best, that you match into your residency program of your choice. In the USA, a similar process exists. So in case you don't hear that you matched on your first cycle, then they do have the option of what is called a SOAP that you can use, but you get a limited time of a few days to apply for that and be successful with your residency match application in the USA. I just figured I'll tell you the differences because I know if you're through the video so much that how much interested you are in terms of getting into residency matching in Canada. You would need a number called the MINC number. This stands for the Medical Identification Number of Canada. Each province has its own criteria when it comes to MINC numbers. The MINC number is essentially a unique identifier assigned to each physician 
who is practicing in Canada. It's essentially a serial number consisting of 12 characters. It's nationally recognized and Federation of Medical Regulatory Authorities of Canada, which is great because once you get the number, you're expected to have the same number all through your practice life within Canada. The first two characters are essentially your country. For example, if it's Canada, it goes by CA. And the next two characters is your degree. If you're an MD, it goes by MD. And then there are seven characters generated that is a unique identifier. And the last character is essentially to check for errors. So the MINC website does give an example of how an MINC number would look like. For someone from Canada who is an MD, it would say CA MD 1234568. This is just an example. Anyway, you OIMG should be getting this number, which is essential for you to apply for Canadian residency matching. The next thing is there are some specific provincial requirements that you need to satisfy, especially if you're interested in applying for matching in British Columbia, Alberta, and Quebec. In British Columbia, they have established what is called as a clinical assessment program and you must go through this program. Now, the program director of the clinical assessment program has mentioned on their website that they are trying to strengthen the process of the clinical assessment program for IMGs. Hopefully, they are going to take more IMGs in the province of British Columbia. For the province of Alberta, you must complete what is called as the Alberta IMG program. Now, Alberta does give you quite a few options in order for you to complete this. There is not a necessity for you to physically be in the province of Alberta in order to complete this program. In Quebec, I personally think this province is focused mostly on IMGs who are really good at French, both written and spoken. So if you're an IMG who is excellent at French, then I definitely encourage to explore the province of Quebec, but if you're not, then you're better off focusing your efforts on other provinces. Is this making sense so far? There is an additional requirement called CASPER. This is required in the province of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and for diagnostic radiology in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm not sure why, but sorry radiologists, it looks like you have to go through an additional requirement compared to other specialties. So the CASPER is an online situational judgment test. Essentially, it tries to establish your situational awareness. So what are the things you would do in a stressful situation? And why you would do that? So you take the right decisions. The CASPER test analyzes a lot of concepts like collaboration, communication, empathy, ethics, motivation, equity, problem solving, professionalism, resilience, self-awareness, and all these concepts put together. What does this mean for you OMGs? This means you have to go through many different steps in order to make yourself eligible to apply for comps matching. And the steps seem to be even more intense in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and probably the most in the province of Alberta. Now I know this can all feel very overwhelming, I want to assure you that we are here to help you out. We guide IMGs through all this, so you don't have to go through the stress of this. To get our professional help, who have the expertise of helping so many IMGs and knowing all the process really well, you can go to www.imgsecrets.com and book an appointment with us. We can put you at a level where your application can get extremely strong, especially in this competitive environment where there are so many IMGs competing for limited spots. Once you get into residency, you'll be a fully licensed physician in Canada. Now let's say if you're an IMG who has already done your residency training or postgraduate training in your home country, there are options through which you can apply for clinical fellowship and then directly export pathways where you can function as an attending or a consultant physician in Canada with a full license. How can you do this? I have a video right here explaining the process. But if you need help with this, to take the right path on which to take, you can always reach out to us. Of course, any questions, post in the comments below. I try to get back to you as soon as possible. Take care, stay safe. I will talk to you soon.